Nothing like starting a little early. Well, actually, we're on time. Yeah. Well, it's for weird. us, it's early. <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> happy, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Man, 2021 snuck up on us, didn't it? <laughs> Not fast enough. <laughs> no, no. I was ready for 2020 to be over, buddy. I don't, I don't think 2021 was sneaking up on anybody. Oh, Everybody was watching for that bitch. <laughs> I know. But you know what? It could be worse. <laughs> I mean, it really could. Well, I mean, we, we, still, be, we still don't know what 2021 that, is. I mean, 2020 could have been the pre-show. <laughs> It's like we have, we have a pre-show. Hold my beer. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Watch this shit. Well, guys, happy New Year. We're glad you're here. Yeah. So yeah, happy New Year. First show of 2021. Barside Jive enters a new decade. Wow. Wow. It's huge. It's huge. Like, like it's really huge. It's really huge. So, I don't know about our lighting, but our lighting, it's, i got to get some additional lighting. It sucks. Hey, if you guys want to donate some additional lighting, we're, we're always uh, taking uh, contributions. Um, uh, let's see. Where are we now? Oh, for those of you that may be new to the show, I'm DC, your host of Barside Jive, and this is... I'm AJ. He's AJ. That's right. <laughs> oh, you can speak for yourself. I don't need to say it's he's AJ. I'm AJ. Yeah, that's what right. he said. Yeah, yeah. And we are once again on the air and live coming at you direct from AJ's on Main Street in historic downtown Grapevine, Texas. Still the Christmas capital. I mean, we still got Christmas decorations up. We're in January. Well, they're gonna they're gonna milk every drop. I wish they'd hurry up and start taking those down, man. Cause I gotta listen to that shit the whole damn time with that beeping noise. Oh, they're still are they still playing the um, no 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 the, the hippo they, song when they when they put the, the decorations up they use those cranes. But every time it goes in reverse, which is like all day, it has that beeping. You know, like it's backing up. Beep beep beep. Really? Oh yeah, it's all day. Really? And putting them up, it took them like four days. So it's four days oh, of hearing no. that nonstop. Beep, beep, yeah. beep. Yeah, it's going to suck. Hey, are we on? Are we streaming on Facebook? It says that it's live on it. Did it? Yeah. Okay, cool. As long as it says it, because I don't, don't see it on mine, but. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Well, guys, <laughs> we are in Grapevine. Uh, I mean, we're going to be celebrating Christmas down here until it just completely fizzles out altogether, probably in March. But, uh, you know, AJ's, like most bars, are like really fun places to hang out. And remember, bars are the place where we can really talk some shit, especially if you're doing tequila. And speaking of tequila, well, this is actually vodka. <laughs> this is actually vodka. Uh, guys, you need to try AJ's uh, pickle shots. Uh, we've uh, got a little uh, heat in these today, don't we? Yeah, spicy. Spicy pickle four, shot. Four different peppers. Four different peppers. What kind of peppers, AJ? Jalapeno, uh, habanero, uh, serrano, and then the... Did you get like the, a Nepalese the, pepper? Yeah, the Nepalese pepper. It's, Nipple? Uh, Nepalese? Nepalese, yeah, from Nepal. It's, uh, oh, it's called okay. a little cherry. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. 
I think I got a seed. All right. Well, guys, never forget. Whoa. That was warm. <laughs> whoa. Never. Whoa. <laughs> that was freaking warm. Whoa. I think it was that seed. <laughs> hmm. Woo. What was it I drank that time? I had to run to the bathroom. Well, I can't remember. Did you remember? Mm -mm. Remember that day, though? No, I was probably drunk. I had to jump up and go to the restroom every few minutes. I thought that was just when you had diarrhea. Oh, maybe that was it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing. <laughs> We're live. Guys, never forget that we are in the shadow of the wings of the immortal winged horny horse named Believe. <laughs> Oh, we're back. We're glad you're here and hope that you remember to tell somebody, I mean anybody, a friend, a mere acquaintance, damn that's hot, <laughs> or even a stranger to join us too. I mean, think about it. You could even use this show as a conversation starter at the bar, at your bar, or come to AJ's bar. Yeah, come here first. We are at the corner of Hudgens and Main Street in historic downtown, downtown Grapevine, Grapevine, Texas. This show happens roughly at noon, as you saw that we were on time today. Central time, till whenever we get done, every Monday, generally, it's about an hour and a half show. So, you know, you ought to be done by 1.30-ish. And uh, have your lunch while you watch us. Can't be much better than that. My featured guest today is from Liverpool, England, and is a composer and rock guitarist whose recording career spans five decades. He is best known as a member of the world-class band Bad Finger and is the last surviving member from that band's classic lineup. He was here last week, but he's back again for more today. What are we drinking today, AJ? Well, you're having the ah. Sierra Nevada's celebration. Celebration. Yeah. Celebrate, and, uh, celebrate, dance to the music. I'm having the same. The same. It's rather hoppy. And it's in a Sierra Nevada glass. Is it a Sierra Nevada beer? My, yeah. my lips are like trembling. <laughs> it's, that's a, that's a, a rare, rare occasion for us. It is. It is. When the branding matches the contents, it's like a real, a real home run for us, right? Well, we got a lot of Sierra Nevada glasses. We do. <laughs> We should we probably do. drink a lot more Sierra Nevada. We, we probably should. <laughs> we get it right. We probably should. Maybe they'll buy some lighting. Uh, <clears throat> did you tell them about it? Tell them where they're from? Uh, Sierra Nevada is uh, Chico, California. And they also have a, a new state-of-the-art facility in uh, Asheville, Car uh, North, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Awesome. They're, they're looking. They're, there's rumor that they want to come to Texas also. So. Awesome. But Maybe I mean, they'll come to Grapevine. But, but who doesn't want to come to Texas? That's right. Everybody's coming to Texas couple of things we want to tell you about AJ's, besides the fact that you can drink from a great selection of craft beers in a glass that the branding may or may not match, may, may not. but he's got the best enormous beef ribs, I'm talking they're like huge, and a fried smoked beef bologna sandwich, that's a killer. Yeah, big hit. It's a killer. It is. Sells a lot of them, and they're great. Big, thick slice. Big, thick. And you smoke it. Mm -hmm. And then you fry it. And then you fry it. Who makes them? Morgan? Mm -hmm. Morgan makes them? You should put mustard on them? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like them with mustard and relish. That's what I like to put on them. Oh, yeah. Texas toast. Yeah, and Texas toast. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> Guys, in addition to the guest segment, which comes later in the show, I've got news, weather, and occasional traffic reports, sports, music, and appearance by a dog named Tony and a deer named Ezekiel as well as other content loaded with entertainment value. So hold on, fasten your seatbelts. You don't want to miss this. And it's lunchtime here, at least in most of the U.S. So if you want to call in and tell me what you're having for lunch, give me a call during the show, 469-844. No, forget that because I don't have that phone. Uh, be sure to check out my YouTube channel. Just search Barside Jive Live at YouTube.com and click subscribe. And then click the little bitty bell, and it's a little bitty bitty bell, to receive notifications when I post premium content, which is free 
That's right, guys, free to all of you. It's just because you're just that freaking special. And now, a word from Lululemon Spray On Yoga Pants. Introducing Lululemon's newest line of apparel, Lululemon Pledge. Spray On Yoga Pants. For only $1,200 per can, enjoy the lightweight flexibility of paint. Wear them everywhere to pick up your afternoon latte. Casual Friday at the office. Hey guys. Its unique acrylic adhesive formula is perfect for the boardroom. See you at the meeting. And of course, you can even wear them to yoga. When they spray on, they stay on. <laughs> Lululemon Pledge. Because the best pants are no pants at all. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> we're live. Um, thank you. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. It's time again for some breaking news. Whoosh. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, and our top news story straight in from the Barside Jive News Desk. Nashville bomber died from COVID-19 <laughs> shortly after blowing himself up. <laughs> Authorities on the scene of the Nashville Christmas Day bombing said that the perpetrator died from COVID shortly after blowing himself up. We've come to the conclusion that an individual named Anthony Warner is the bomber. He was present when the bomb went off and then he perished from COVID-19, according to officials, said Don Cochran, U.S. Attorney for the Middle District of Tennessee. <clears throat> DNA taken from the scene was matched to Warner by forensic analysts, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Director David Rausch said at the news conference. Warner 63 of nearby Antioch, Tennessee, had already been identified as the person of interest in the explosion of a recreational vehicle in downtown Nashville on Christmas morning. It's not clear where Warner contracted COVID-19 from. Multiple vaccines for the disease have been released to the public and only a handful of recipients have died after being vaccinated. I heard he had blue eyes. Blue eyes? Yeah, one blue over there and one blue over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, that's funny. <laughs> that's real funny. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and guys, Greta Thunberg, you remember her? She condemns coronavirus for causing <clears throat> apocalypse 10 years too early. Straight out of Stockholm, Greta Thunberg has come out to condemn the coronavirus outbreak, saying the virus callously ended the world 10 years before climate change even had the chance to. <laughs> Try. As Thunberg is known for her fiery speeches and doomsday predictions about climate change, she began to worry that the spread of this virus would take the spotlight off her and her brave efforts and instead cause the world to worry about an actual immediate crisis. How dare you? How dare How dare you cause the apocalypse a decade before it was supposed to happen? She shouted at a press conference. Man, she could shout. Hmm. I was not consulted on this. I should be in school right now, but I'm not because the whole world is under lockdown many years before I predicted the end would come. What you think about that? I wish she had blue eyes. <laughs> this just <laughs> in. This just in. Oh, this is ju this is just in. What is? Um. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is just in. <laughs> Representative Emmanuel Cleaver represent Cleaver yeah, rep <laughs> representing the fifth district of Missouri deliver the opening prayer for the 117th Congress yesterday. He ended his prayer before Congress with the words, Amen, and then a woman. <laughs> Newsflash for the pride of Missouri. Amen is not a gendered word, doofus. 
and therefore it was stupid to assign gender to the word. Yeah. Amen is Latin for so be it, a solemn expression of belief and affirmation. Here's an idea. Why don't you change your name to e woman <laughs> or e woman -el. These people are shaping the direction of your country, guys. And this guy is serving his seventh <clears throat> term in Congress. There is no imagining what in the hell he's done during all those seven terms. It's no different than the guy that thought that <clears throat> Guam would flip over if they put too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Gosh. It's kind of scary, right, guys? <clears throat> if it's not, it ought to be. Oh, and back by popular demand. How about some uh, This Week in Rock History, January 1 through January 6? We got some birthdays. 1 through January 6. We got Morgan Fisher, keyboardist for Mott the Hoople. You listened to them, didn't you? Uh, yeah. January 1, 1950 was when he was born, and Chick Churchill was born on January 2, 1946. He was the keyboardist for 10 years after. Stephen Stills was born on January 3rd, 1945, and he, of course, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and sometimes Young. John Paul Jones, my favorite bassist, Led Zeppelin, January 3rd, 1946 is when he was born, and Michael Stipp, maybe that's Stippy. Or Stipe. Stipe? I don't know. S-T-I-P-E. He was born on January 4th, 1960, and he was the singer for R.E.M. I didn't listen to a whole lot of R.E.M., did you? No. Maybe it's R.E.M. Sounds no, like it's, it's, it's R.E.M. Chris Stein, born January 5th, 1950, guitarist for Blondie. Marilyn Manson, born January 5th, 1969, shock rock artist. Sid Barrett, January 6th, 1946 was his birthday. Singer for Pink Floyd and Malcolm Young, January 6, 1953, he was born rhythm and guitarist for ACDC. These guys have permanently left the building during this week. January 3rd, 2012, guitarist Fleetwood Mac, Mr. Bob Weston. Phil Lennett, January 4th, 1986, bassist, vocalist for Thin Lizzy. So rest in peace, guys. Chart toppers and new releases. We got Cal Perkins releases the hit song, Blue Suede Shoes, on January 1, 1956. Simon and Garfunkel, The Sound of Silence, hits number one, January 1, 1966. George Harrison's All Things Must Pass hits the top of the charts, January 2, 1971. The Doors' debut album is an instant hit, reaching number one in the U.S. January 4, 1967. Yes releases their album, Roundabout, January 4, 1972. Elton John's cover of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is released on January 4, 1975. Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits album is certified gold, January 5, 1968. At 23 years old, Bruce Springsteen releases his first album, Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey, January 5th, 1973. That's a good one for you, isn't it? No. Peter Frampton's signature live album, Frampton Comes Alive, is released January 6th of 1976 in Through the Outdoor by Led Zeppelin. Certified Platinum, January 7th, 1980. Eagles Live is certified platinum January 7th, 1981. And last but not least, AJ, this week in rock history with Capitol Records, the Beatles have three albums in the Billboard Top 10. That's right, three albums in the Top 10 January 1, 1965. And we're, and we're still asking why. <laughs> why? Steve. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham joined Fleetwood <coughs> Mac January 1, 1975. Elton John cracks the top 40 with the last song, making it 23 consecutive years he's had a song on the charts. 
It breaks Elvis's previous record of 22, January 1, 1993. Leo Fender sells his company, Fender Guitars, to CBS for $13 million, January 4, 1965. Jimi Hendrix is banned from the BBC. Who wasn't banned from the BBC? After he went off script on one of their shows, January 4, 1969. And guys... I hate to disappoint, but that's all for this week in rock history, which means that it's time for uh, some COVID-19 news. Oh, we're back. And there you have it, guys. So, I don't know. What do you say, AJ? Should we do some sports? I guess. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> Man, these little breaks are short. The rules are simple, guys. You walk up to a white table, you stand across from your opponent, and you slap the shit out of his face. Then if he chooses to return fire, you take a slap in the face as well. The two of you repeat this as many times as necessary until one bows out of the beautiful slap dance, either on your own volition or by being knocked out. Also, it seems they put chalk on their hands to better show the slap power, I guess. Kind of like leaving skid marks. <laughs> yeah. The sport is called professional slapping. You will see this nowhere but right here on Barside Jive. Oh, by the way, the winner won more than just the satisfaction of slapping people silly, too. This year, the best slapper in Siberia took home a cool 30,000 Russian ruble. Don't get excited, because in Canada, it's only like 630 bucks, and in America, it's like only 470 bucks. The man who got to put his stinging hands on that cash, well, his name is Vasily Pelman. A pure beauty who clocked in about 370 pounds of pure slapping prowess. Pellman went by the amazing nickname of Dumplin'. We gotta have some video on this. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now let's go to the World <laughs> Championship Slapping Competition for a closer look at the action, AJ. <clears throat> I'm ready. That was Dumplin' on the left, guys. Yeah, the last man standing. So, hey, maybe professional slapping is uh, your, your, your sport. And now a word from Fog Hat Sellers. IDC. Thanks for having us on your show. Uh, and for you folks, I'm Roger Earl of the band Foghat, and these are our wines. Foghat Cellars. This is a Chardonnay from Monterey County, absolutely delicious, 2014. We have a 2013 Pinot Noir from Monterey County. It's absolutely fabulous, a wonderful drinking wine. If you like Pinots, you'll love it. Um, 
This is a Cabernet Sauvignon from Paso Robles. All our wines come from the central coast of California. Uh, Steve Rasmussen is our winemaker. Um, though in fact, myself and Linda uh, actually get involved in the making of some of our wines. Um, drink, enjoy, go to fogatcellars.com to find out how to get them. Thanks, bye. We lined up. <laughs> you're you're not. Now we are. We lined up. Okay. And if you use the coupon code Bar Side Jive on the checkout screen, you'll get twenty percent off your purchase. So get 20%. your twenty percent off. Twenty percent. That's significant, right? <laughs> so get your bottle a day, and you can even spend a few dollars more. And Roger Earl will autograph your bottle. So that would be really cool, guys. It is time for. Weather. From your bar side job, Global Weather Center, where we try to stick to the current weather since forecasts are always so freaking wrong, including our own. Here we go. Local AJ's weather is sunny, about 55. The high today is supposed to be 63. Air quality is moderate. Winds out of the north. About two miles an hour, you think? Barely, barely blowing. Humidity's like they say is seventy-two. I have a hard time believing it. No, it's not. It doesn't. Feel, <laughs> it does not feel moist at all. <laughs> a five percent chance of rain this evening, <clears throat> and the sun's going to set at five thirty-five p.m. You love that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You get, you go home. It's dark. Yeah, you know. get up. It's dark. I don't know who the hell came up with this. But I think they they're asking. I think so too. We need to give them. We need to force feed them some of those. Uh, Spicy pickle shots. <laughs> okay, guys, let's uh, do this. Let's go to Shirley Nash, a resident in Cornelius, North Carolina, where it's really cold, guys, really cold. Hey, Shirley, what will you be doing during the looming winter storm? We'll probably sit around and cook some soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks, Shirley, for that informative report. <clears throat> and, the <clears throat> and that's your global weather from your Barside Jive meteorologist? Kinda. Here at Barside Jive, our weather was brought to you by our friends over at Heinz. Um, how does it smell? Um, how does it smell? No, it's not. Maybe with your hand, Jak jako rukou? No. Vím si, že je to třeba, já nevím, lahev od kečupu. A ty se snažíš ten zbytek dostat ven. Kečup? No. No. Um. OK. Nezapomenutelné momenty. Víš od roku 1849. Love me some Heinz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, guys. Uh, did I say time to take a quick look at traffic? Okay, it's time to take a quick look at traffic. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, it may be fine here on... Yeah, it may be fine here on Main Street in historic Great Mountain, Texas, but let's check in with Siobhan, who... Siobhan? <laughs> let's check in with Siobhan. 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 Let's, check, let's check in with Siobhan, Bon, who, for a closer look at traffic conditions in Saginaw, Michigan, population 48,000. Angie, this right here is a map of downtown Saginaw, and this construction is happening along North Michigan, starting at Houghton Avenue and going all the way to State Avenue. Drivers are down to the single lane in each direction, and local businesses are paying. The That's a penis. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> That'll bring us up to our featured guest segment, which is sponsored by Hip and Hippie. Hip and Hippie is a planet-loving company known for its high-quality, earth-friendly, 100% recyclable candle line and natural body care products. That's what keeps us looking so good, right? <clears throat> it's no wonder eco-supporting people love Hip and Hippie. HipandHippie.com. Guys, there are a few bands in the annals of rock music as star-crossed in their history as Badfinger. Pegged as one of the most promising British groups of the late 1960s and the one world-class talent ever signed to the Beatles' Apple Records label that remained with the label Badfinger enjoyed the kind of success in England and America that most other bands could only envy. Yet a string of memorable hit singles come and get it, no matter what, Day After Day and Baby Blue, my personal favorite, saw almost no reward from that success. Instead, four years of hit singles and international tours precipitated by the suicides of two of its original members and legal proceedings that left lawyers as the only ones enriched by the group's work. I will be right back with Joey Molland after this quick break. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I hung up. I hung up. Yeah. Joey, that that was awesome. I, <laughs> like I said, it's my favorite. I'm glad to hear it's your favorite. So, yeah, it's a great, it's a great song. Tremendous song, yeah. I'm sorry about my croquet old voice, <laughs> dude. No, you, it was, you got, you got to get warm some. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, uh, it's good that you're having hot tea instead of uh, beer. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe one of these days uh, you're down here in Dallas, we'll go have a beer together. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'll I, buy. I my, insist. My That's treat. okay. That's my okay, treat. man. We'll, uh, we'll <laughs> toast to Badfinger. All right, boss. Sounds good. <laughs> so hang on to your guitar because I may ask you to play one more before we conclude the show, okay? Okay. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So after Apple Records folded in about 1973, you guys really struggled financially, legally, and you know, the band was wrought with management problems, which ultimately led to Pete Ham's suicide in, I think, 1975. Those yeah, times right. had to be very, very difficult for you, Joey. Looking yeah, back I... at that really low point in your life with all that uh, going on, what is your most vivid memory? Uh... Well, it's hard to say, man. There were a lot of good memories all jumbled in there. You know, we were gigging maybe 120 nights a year. Uh, we were doing, you know, r routinely doing like 100 day tours, you know, uh, playing everywhere. And the, the shows were sold out. So we had all that good side. Um, we were getting, a, since we'd started making some real money, uh, we didn't take the money. We left it in the company. We had a corporation. We left the money in there. We only took a salary. Like we got like 350 bucks a week, 320 bucks a week, which was loads of money. It was loads of money in those days, though. Oh, we, used, we, we used to have no money. You know, we had no money. And then we were making 300 bucks a week. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> and so we got that routinely every month. And that continued until all the way through 73, all the way up until the summer of 74 was when it started to get hairy. But in that same period, we'd left Apple, we'd signed with Warner Brothers. Uh, Warner Brothers gave us an enormous amount uh, of money each record. And we'd made a, a, a Warner Brothers record, so they'd paid us a bunch of money. Apple was continuing to pay our royalties. And remember, we had four records on the radio at that time. And the Without You song was out. Mm -hmm, right. Nielsen, Nielsen had covered that. And so there was loads of royalties coming in. The, most of the royalties were sent to the business, you know, unless we wanted to get something like Tommy got a Porsche 
Um, he was the only one out of us who got anything like that. Tommy got a Porsche Targa 911, beautiful, oh, dark, nice. dark blue, really beautiful. And uh, the rest of us drove used cars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? So, and then Tommy bought a house, actually. Uh, but the rest of us lived in apartments or rented places. Um, but we were living good. You know, we were enjoying ourselves. We went yeah. broke. We went broke. Uh, although we, we thought we were saving our money. The manager, the New York manager, Stan Polly, the business guy, he just spent it, man. Like hand over fist. Uh, guy was a complete fool. You know, if he would have not done that, then we would have made a bloody fortune because we would have stayed together, you know? And we were, and sooner or later, one of us would have written a hit again. You know, Peter kind of dried up a little bit, you know, after, after Baby Blue, I think. Um, he just, he, he just kind of, the song started to get a bit more introverted. The, the, the domestic situation that the band got itself in was a bit kind of weird as well. That got a bit shaky. Uh, without going into, you know, details, you know, but there were affairs going on and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so it kind of got, it's kind of starting to screw itself up. Uh, but still, we were making records and enjoying ourselves. So, but around about July 74, we'd been on tour in America and we went back to England and, you know, Tiat brought out the four track tape then, mm -hmm. the home one. Right. It was the first one that was available. Right. And of course, I wanted one. I wanted to buy one. And they were they expensive. Were, they were a thousand bucks. Yeah. 1,200 bucks, which I suppose is expensive. I didn't think of it as expensive. Um, you know, I called the office. I called the office and, uh, in New York and I said, I want to buy one of these tapes. And uh, the thousand bucks, can you send me the money? No. I said, what? Well, we haven't got the money. I said, well, we, Apple just sent you a quarter of a million dollars. They just sent it, and we got a letter from Apple every time they sent them, you know. They just sent them a quarter of a million dollars or pounds, maybe even pounds. And uh, so I knew they had money. Right. I knew they had money. But they tell me they got no money. I went to Neil at Apple, and I asked him, could he put a hold on the check? that he'd sent to New York. Neil said, I can't put a hold on it, but if one more member of the band calls me, I'll stop it. I'll stop payments on it. So I called Tommy Evans and said, hey, Tommy, they've said they've got no money in New York, but I know they've just got a check, a big check. And he said, yeah, I saw that. I've got a letter. <laughs> we all got the same letter. <laughs> he, called, he called Neil. Neil stopped the check. The check bounced in New York and the shit hit the pan. Oh, I bet. Polly was pissed. No, but he didn't have any money, no. He didn't have any money and there's nothing he could do. Right. You know, Apple, the money was ours. Apple right. knew them. And he, they only paid it to him because we said pay it to him. Right. You know? What right. was the, yeah. So all of a sudden there was no money going to New York and, oh. Bloody nightmare. <laughs> eventually, they, eventually, New York found money and uh, started to send us our wages again and everything. And uh, just a nightmare. Just a bloody nightmare. Did you get anyway, your $1,000 for your... Uh... No, I never did get to see it. <laughs> never did get it. Never. <laughs> I mean, they were unbelievable. Uh, never got it. Uh, what, wow. a stupid, what a stupid fool. It was a tool, you know. The first thing we did when we made, when we had a hit record, first lump of money we got, we all went and bought Reeboxes. We all went and bought them. They were like the tool for the songwriter. Yeah. Because you could, you could record an acoustic, then record another acoustic on it, even though it was only two tracks, and yeah. you could bounce backwards and forwards. You know, you could double track your vocals. It was great for demos. It was great. Really easy to work as well. No, no big mechanical genius needed to do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's all we wanted was we wanted the right songs. And to me, that a four-track team, wow, you know, stunning. Anyway, so uh, 
we started to argue about it then. We, we should, I know I was, we should get rid of this fellow, Polly, get somebody else, you know, he's, he's a thief, you know, he's a knockout. Right. And, uh, Tommy agreed with me, I think, and Mike. Mike definitely agreed. But Pete didn't agree with it. Pete didn't believe it. Um, and he insisted that we stay with Polly. Yeah, he did. And then, when the fiasco with the Warner Brothers records went down, you know you know what happened there, right? Yeah. The, we put a record out on Warner's. It was selling good, wish you right. were here. Right. Selling good, great reviews. Uh, Polly found a way to get into the escrow accounts the Warner Brothers escrow account, and how the hell he did it, and took the money. Oh, wow. Actually stole $350,000 off him. Oh. Warner Brothers, because we were the people who had signed the Warner contract, they killed our record. They took the record out of the shops, uh, and uh, they sued us for the money that was missing, and suspended the record deal, yeah? So we were good friends with them. My wife and I used to go down and have a drink with Derek Taylor, who was the PR guy for uh, Apple, and then he was the PR guy for Warner's when we were with them. We mm -hmm. used to go down. We used to go down the office there, Mike too, and uh, we'd have a couple of drinks with them and have a laugh and a joke, you know. And uh, so it was easy for us to get in touch with Warner's in London, and have them get in touch with Bearbank. And what the hell is going on? Why are they suing us? Right. You know? Why right. did they kill the record? And they told us then what had happened. And then years later, I got the, the same story from the president of Warner Music. Um, the money was missing from the escrow accounts. They didn't know. I had no idea how. And uh, it was war it was bad finger Warner Brothers money. And so they had to do something and they could only sue us. They couldn't sue the manager. So they sued us and, and, and killed and sued and took the record out. Anyway, they told us that as soon as the, the, the whole affair was sorted out, what had happened, they'd reinstate the bad thing, the record deal, and we'd carry on making records for Warners. So they sent a telex, and this is exactly what happened. They sent us a telex to the New York office to let us know that, that we were cool. The, the office called my house. My wife answered, Kathy, and she, she said, okay, and she relayed the message to me. Right. I was at a meeting with the band and Barry Marshall. You know who Barry Marshall is? No. Barry is now martial arts and he books Paul McCartney. He's Paul McCartney's agent. Oh. Well, he was our agent back then. You know, he booked us. Anyway, we were at the, at the office there talking about a tour. The call comes in. I turn around and tell the band, Warners have called the house. And uh, Kathy just told me that they've said that our deal is cool. They, we've just got to sort this money thing out. And uh, Pete freaked out. He, um, he, he said, he stood up and he said, I'm not having Kathy managing this band. And I'm leaving. And he walked out. Well, we were sitting there talking. We've been talking about going on tour. Yeah. Like in you know, a month from now, we're going on tour, right? And he's leaving the band anyway. So Mike stands up and tells him where to go, yells it at it, you know, he's really angry. And uh, so that was really the beginning of the end of the band, right there. Yeah, he been left. The three of us are sitting in the office. You know what? We did somehow a, a keyboard, a, a, a manager, Bill Collins, your personal guy. He found a keyboard player named Bob Jackson. And we auditioned Bob, and Bob joined the band. So we had a replacement now for Pete. Right. And Bob could sing really high harmonies, too. And, and, and we had Tommy, you know, so we still had the vocals. Right. I could sing okay. And, uh, you know, we went back to rehearsal for the tour. Because the tour was coming, no matter what we were doing. Right. The tour was coming. Yeah, it was uh, happening. Yeah, it was happening, man. <laughs> uh, so uh, we just rehearsed, and then a few weeks later, Pete came down and uh, make a long story short, you know, he, he came back in the band. Um, I talked to him over over the meet. We had a bit of a meeting uh, in a cafe next door. What was going to happen about Polly, about the manager, and. Uh, he wanted to stay with him still. He still wanted to stay with him. 
And the other guys decided, well, you know what, well, maybe we should do that, you know. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm leaving, I'm out of there. And, that, and I, so I said, I was leaving. I left at the end of the tour. I said, I'll do the tour with you, but I'm leaving at the end of it. I really didn't see any point. The money thing wasn't going to be sorted out. Yeah. He wasn't going to be able to give Warners that money back. Right. If that whole thing was gone, you know, that whole thing was gone. So uh, we didn't really know what to do. We, we couldn't get an attorney. The contractual interference was the phrase of the day. Uh, and uh, so we couldn't get really any help. Uh, I was gone. I was, the, the tour ended in, in the end of November and I left. And I came to America in, in June, July, January rather. You know, the band went back in the air and, and made another album. Never got any money from that either. <laughs> what, what was Pete I, thinking? I've got no idea. Five months later, Pete's wife is pregnant. She's going in hospital to have a baby. He calls the office in New York to get some money. Wants to buy his old lady a 90. So, you know, things that girls need, you know. And uh, he's going to buy it for her. He's told the, the guy in New York, tells him flat out, you haven't got any money. Now, this is Pete Am. He wasn't only in bad figure, but he'd written no matter what. He'd written day after day, right. he'd written Baby Blue, and he'd written Without You, one of the biggest songs in the world. Yeah. yeah? In the, I mean, in the world. You know, I raised my kids on, on the, my share of the, that song. You know? I raised yeah. my kids, paid all my bills, all my rent, all my cars, all my gas from that car, from that song. I'm not kidding. Wow. Pete was told he had no money. And then he knew, didn't he? Then he yeah. knew. Then he started, yeah, then, then he, he started knew. thinking. He went out that night. I'm not kidding you. And with Tommy, they went to the pub and he wanted to talk to Tommy. They had a few ales, quite a few ales, I guess. And uh, Scotch. Pete said, I've got, I know what to do now. At the end of that night, he told Tommy, he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something. And he went home and he wrote a little letter uh, blaming Polly for everything. And then he went and hung himself. And he thought that, he thought that would fix it, you know. I've got no idea why he didn't want to leave him in the first place. Yeah. He, I, don't think he, I don't think he could believe it. But if this guy had taken everything he had, and I mean everything, yeah. There and he nothing. stood up for it. And he stood up for it. Yeah, him. he stood up for him. Yeah, yeah. The band broke up. The band broke up. Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, then he, and then he thought that would help, or he thought it would. I don't know, man. I really, I mean, I don't understand it. When they called me and told me that that had happened, I was, I was flabbergasted, you know? Yeah. Tommy called me from London. Yeah. He was so down, man. I'm, Tommy was just completely down. Which which of those guys were you closest to? Eh, uh, I don't know. I think Tommy in the, in in that in the in, you know during the height of the band. Uh, uh, but uh, Mike and I got along really well. Uh, Pete was a bit of a lo a bit of a loner, but I got on really well with him. And uh, you know he'd do things like play practical jokes on, on you, you know what I mean? And yeah. He was that kind of guy, Pete. Yeah. Funny fella, he filmed, he was the guy who filmed us all doing stupid stuff, you know? Like, right, right. Like, uh, we all had a little, you know, a little of that, you know? Yeah. Enjoyed ourselves, like, Pete liked to drink a little bit. We all liked to, I mean, you know, who's, who's 23 years old in a, in a rock band, number one in the charts, who doesn't have a drink, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. <laughs> so, right. yeah, we had a, we had a pretty, Really a nice situation there. That guy, Polly, was a, a crook. You know, we found out later, he was a bad man for the mob. He, oh. used, to he used to pay money to judges in New York. There were actually pictures of him after he got found guilty of this in the federal court in, in New York. And there's a picture of him walking down the courthouse steps. You know, mob bad man, you know. Uh, gets off with you know three hundred dollar fine or something you know. Wow. That's where that's the world he came from. Uh, I think the same guy though had police commendations on his wall of his office. 
you know? Well, you tell it, me, you tell me, man. You it tell was, me. <laughs> dude, it was New York. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It still is apparently. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, well, what caused you and Tommy to operate like rival bands? I mean, both of you were doing the best thing. Your thing. It was a circumstance. We were actually we made a record for Electra Asylum. Uh, and they called it Badfinger. So we made another record with another another record label um, in Florida. Uh, what was he called now? I can't remember the name of the record label, but we went there and did a record for them. Uh, bless, I wish I could remember. Anyway, we were supposed to do two albums for the label. Mm -hmm. We did the first one. It did okay. It didn't do anything great. We had a couple of singles off it. I had one and Tommy had one, I think. And uh, it did okay, but it wasn't a hit. Like um, We went back to LA where we were living and we, we were kind of hanging around there. We did a tour, you know, the band. Uh, 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 we did a tour of America and then went back to LA. And it was time for a second record to be made. The producer came up and he only bought half of the money with him. And he was supposed to bring X amount of dollars, and he bought, you know, Y amount of dollars. And uh, we were all in there. We were all at the pre-production, you know, studio. And uh, we were playing our songs, all the new songs. We had, we had a bunch. I had a cassette with me songs on it. And uh, I was playing the songs. And he, and he brought this thing up about only bringing half the money. And I stopped me too, you know. Uh, so what do you mean you bought half the money? He said, well, we, we figured we'd bring half now and we'll give you the rest when you come down to make the record because we're going to go and record in Florida. I said, well, wait a minute, you know, that's not a deal. We were supposed to get the, the advance today. You know, that's, that's the deal. You know? right. I mean, so, I mean, it's a contract, isn't it? You know? Right. <laughs> what about if we came to you and said, oh, we're just going to record half of the, half of the record. <laughs> you know, we'll do the rest like, you know, <sighs> sometime down the road. Anyway, so I said, look, and, and this was my opinion. I said, I think we should go home. They should get the money. We should come back. Right. And uh, it wasn't that great a deal. We were, I'm not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars here. And uh, anyway, so I went home. Tommy and Tommy and, and this is where it goes. Tommy and, and Tony K. Tony K was in the band then. Tommy and Tony sat down with the guy and they did a deal. And they threw me out of the band and they got the half of the advance. Right. So. So I was at home and I heard about, I called the attorney the next day <laughs> to talk to him about um, the half of the advanced situation that they'd bought. I said, I went home. Oh, I can't, you know. He said, oh yeah, he said, uh, I heard about that. He said, but I've got to tell you that they've, uh, they've decided, Tommy and Tony have decided to accept the money and, uh, and you're not in the band anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> so good evening. <laughs> so, um, wow. So I just, you know what I did? I, I immediately put a band together and went out on the road immediately. Yeah. Didn't even think about it. Just went on the road. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a musician's recourse. That's what a musician can do. Right. And that's all I could do. I didn't have any money. I uh, went on the road. Uh, Tommy went, and they went on the road. So you had two bad fingers. So we had two bad fingers now. Now, where did we get to... This is, this is a great story. We stopped in, in San Diego. Uh, the bass player, Robbie Eulis, uh, was from San Diego. And uh, he picked up a little bit of a, a little baggy. And, uh, you know, a little bit, little bit of smoke, okay? Right. And uh, so we ride down uh, to Louisiana. The tour's starting in Louisiana. We rent ourselves one of those GMC campers, you know, a little bit of a trailer, put the gear in, and we're gone. Yeah, we get right. to we get to uh, Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, we do the gig. The gig's okay. It's all good. First gig, you know what I mean. Uh, the drummer goes in a bar. A uh, guy asks him if he's got any pot, and he doesn't smoke the drummer. He says, "Yeah, we've got a bit." And he runs on the bus and he goes and gets a bit of our pot, <laughs> and he gives it to the guy, and the guy's a cop. <laughs> So we're busted that night in Monroe, Louisiana. All so of I'm, you. Uh, we're laying in bed. You know what it's like on a bus? We're laying in bed. 
fucking half dressed and all that. <laughs> the cops woo, 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 all around us, you know, like, and uh, this is Louisiana as well. It's the worst place in the world to get busted. Oh, yeah. They arrested us, haul us off to jail. And uh, we slept on the floor that night in, in the, uh, it was like a great big bathroom. We the slept on the, they gave the us In the drunk tank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, so we, we slept in there that night. And the next night they moved us into cells, separate cells. I was in a multi, multi-person cell, uh, top bunk. Anyway, really a sick, bad situation. Now they've taken all the gear as well. They've been pounded the bus and all the equipment. Uh, uh, and you know, without going on and on about this, we eventually pled guilty uh, to being uh, distributing marijuana. <laughs> we eventually, uh, no, we no, we pled guilty to simple possession, um, and the deal was we got a fine and uh, and released. You know what I mean? And then that would be the end of it. Right. We, we only got that because we had some kind of political connections. I knew somebody. Uh, that had worked on the uh, Carter campaign and stuff like that. So I had a few connections in that world. Didn't really know them as that, but they were. And when they heard I was in jail, they, 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 they helped me, you know what I mean? So, so pleading guilty was the path of least resistance. Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we made all the papers and all that stuff. We were, we were drug dealing fools. and uh anyway so we went on and uh, you know what we got out of there we finished the tour even yeah. though we didn't have any equipment and we had no clothes they kept everything to louisiana police oh wow so we went first stop was the goodwill you know i bought myself a pair of white uh patent leather shoes with buckles some red socks a pair of brown corduroy levi's <laughs> and, and a t-shirt you know and that's what i wore on stage for the next few days Oh, oh wow! And we did, we, but we finished all the gigs, paid all the commissions. Everybody got some money out of it because we had yeah. a load of gigs, and uh, we went back to our label. Uh, yeah, so that's how that happened. Tommy actually called me in jail, and uh, how you doing, Joe? He knew I was in jail, a bastard. How you doing? <laughs> so yeah, that was really the end of Tommy and my relationship. Although we did, uh, we did talk to each other over the next few years. Yeah. Tommy always wanted to get the money. Yeah. Well, one thing I didn't tell you about the bad finger story was when, when we asked Neil to not send any money to New York, the Apple guy. Right, right. He, he started saving the money for us, all the royalties. And he opened an escrow account and he put all bad fingers royalties in that account, oh. publishing and recording. And it was quite a stack of money. Yeah. And then he, he took it to the court. Because people were saying Apple were holding bad fingers money. He took it to court in London and gave the money to the court and made it clear that this is bad finger royalties and they've got legal problems. And when they sort those legal problems out, then they can pick it up. Right. They'll come and collect it. And so the judge, you know, the judge wrote that up and uh, that's how it was. And that court, that money stayed there. I think that went down in 1979, stayed there till 1985, which is when we went to court and got the money, you know? Because from 1985, we've got all the bad finger royalties, 100% of them. Pete's had his, Tommy's had his, Mike's had his, and I've had mine. And, and Bill Collins, our personal manager, gets his too. So we all ended up getting the money, you know? If Pete would have, Pete and Tommy, because Tommy committed suicide too, as you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I always, always thought it was crazy how Tommy killed himself the same way Pete did. Yeah, yeah. It, it was very weird, the whole thing. Uh, you know, I don't understand that. You know, I, I really don't understand what, what happened there. And I've never talked to his wife about it. And of course, you know, you can't talk to people after they do it. Right. There wasn't any letter from Tommy. There was no note about why he did it. Everybody put it down to him suffering from depression uh, and uh, the fact that Pete had done that. It depressed him more than he ever had. And uh, all those years had gone by. He well, still every, could, he everything still you could. read, Joey, says that you and him had a kind of a falling out over some royalties. And that may have led up to it. But do you, 
do you discredit that? Yes, I do. Yeah. He, he, he told me he was going to kill himself. He yeah. called me, he called me, I think the night before he did it. Um, he really wanted the money from the court. And he knew as well as I did, we couldn't get the money out of, out of the court until Pete's family agreed, uh, Tommy had to agree, Mike had to agree, Bill had to agree, and I had to agree. Yeah, okay. all, five, all five parties had to agree. Now, I could go to any lawyer I wanted, and I did that in the beginning to try and get some money, because I'd got no money at all. Uh, 11 years I went without getting any money from, from bad people. Yeah. Uh, of those royalties. Peter, Tommy, Tommy was getting royalties. He was getting royalties all the time. Um, it should have all gone in the kitty, but he was getting it all the time. You know? Uh, anyway, it just is what it is. Uh, uh, I swear to God, I swear to God, uh, I, I couldn't have stopped it. I could not have stopped it. I was in California. He was in uh, London. He was mad at me. I don't know why he was mad at me. I didn't get stopped the money, you know? Right. I, it wasn't me that was stealing the money. I didn't steal any money, you know? So I don't know what happened. I don't know why he was so angry. I've got an idea, but I'm not going to talk to you about that because it involves Tommy and it involves his family, and I don't want to... Right. They don't need any more bad news. They don't right. need, you know, so... Right. Not going to benefit anybody now. Well, well, Joey, you you lost Pete, and then you lost Tommy, and then I guess later on you lost Mike. Yeah, Mike passed away. Had a uh, aneurysm, brain aneurysm. Yeah, Mike and I worked together really. Uh, oh, I guess from 1986 Ooh, for the next 10, 12 years, we played gigs, and uh, we never made any more records, but we did all that. You know. And we worked forever. And well, I was the best man at his wedding, Mike's. You know, so that's, uh, I don't think he would have had me be his best man if, if, if he would have thought I was, you know, fucking the band over, you know? Right. So, right. And I know books have been written and people have said things, but, you know, most of it, I think all of it, the things are written by people who weren't there. Right. And, I don't know if you ever were in a band. I've never been in a band where I knew anybody around the band who knew what was going on in the band. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's a band, right. and a band's a band, and a, you know. Right. Maybe you it's time. Best. Maybe it's time, Joey, that you write your own book. Maybe, maybe it is. You know. Yeah. I wrote a book and told the uh, the story of it. Not, not, not with all the details and, and all that, but just the general story of Bad Thing is a good story, you know? Right. We got together, we wrote our songs. Uh, we never handled the money ourselves, you know what I mean? We just got paid. Right. So we did all the things that we were asked. Yeah, so it was all good for me, touring and traveling the world, man, playing, buying Gibson Les Pauls and, you know, <laughs> Martins and... Just, it was great, man, going to pawn shops, going down in a ghetto, right. one of the cheap guitars, man, getting chased. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, you know, it was a hairy life, but it was fantastic, man, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, still, it's still great now. I've just made a new record. Yes. I mean, you know, come on, I just yes. made a new record. It's fantastic. Yes. And everybody said it's great. Everybody says it's oh, great. Oh, be, be true to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, what your first album in nearly 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And you just released it last month. Yeah. It was released in October on the 16th. Yeah. 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 I'm really happy with the reaction to it. It's, I think it's selling. It's, I'm not sure. It, you know? it, <laughs> Joey, it's an awesome album. It, Thank it's, you, man. I mean, there's like this message in every song. I wish we had the time we could kind of get into that, but it's an amazing album. Love Thank you, music. man. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you, it's, man. It's good stuff. It's you good still stuff. write songs. You know, you still write songs. You don't stop writing songs. And, right. They're uh, getting ideas for songs, and then, you know, you meet somebody like Mark Hudson, who's brilliant. Oh yeah. Uh, we became good friends over the past ten years or so. He's worked with Cher, Aerosmith, Ringo, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Grammy winner guy. Yeah, you know? yeah, huge. He's brilliant, and um, and he produced he, your album. Yeah, he asked me, "Did I want to make a record?" Yeah, I said, "Yeah." <laughs> Are you kidding? I'm, I'm kidding. still broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been. I got to tell you, I haven't been broke since. 1985 when we got our royalties yeah I you know? know i was just i was so, just yeah but you, you you know you yeah I'd, lo I'd love to have a record I'd like to be that not broke <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah guys you're watching bar side jive with my guest singer songwriter and guitarist joey molland of the english rock band badfinger joey i know that some of the people that you featured on that album monkey's drummer mickey dolan's Basis, yeah, basis yeah, chef yeah. for Chicago and Neil yeah. Diamond, Steve yeah. Holly of Paul yeah. McCartney and the Wings, <clears throat> yeah, and even yeah. uh, and even John Lennon's son, uh, John yeah, and Julian, Kinky's yeah, yeah, Julian, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. it was pretty cool working with those guys. Oh yeah, man, they're all super guys, super pros, uh, lovely people. Mm -hmm. Mickey Dolan's hilarious and. A uh, great performer. I don't know if you ever seen him on stage. He's a great performer. Um, and Jason Chef too. What a great singer! Wow. Um, oh, yeah. I'm serious. You know his dad was a bass player for Elvis. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was Elvis Presley's bass player. There. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? How cool is that? <laughs> I bet he had some stories. Oh yeah, little little things. We didn't we didn't talk that much about that, but. I was stunned when I found out. Wow, Elvis Presley! Elvis Presley! Wow, all yeah. round to square one for me, man. Yeah, I like it. And, and Julian Lennon, of course, was a, a real sweetheart. I'd met Julian about when Velocke came out, when yeah. his album came out, uh, which I really liked. And I went down to see him, see him do a show, and I happened to go backstage and say hello, and uh, we just chatted a little bit. But I'd met him. And we got along okay, you know, like, nice, nice to see you, and I'll see you again. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I didn't see him all these years, but uh, John, I mean, uh, Mark Hudson knew him really quite well. And so he, he, he they talking about something else, I don't know what it was, but he mentioned that he was going to be making a record with me, and Julian said, oh, great, you know, knockout. And uh, Mark said, oh, oh, do you like, yeah, yeah, I love Badfinger. And he was a big Badfinger fan. And he, uh, he said, why don't you come and do a bit of singing with Joey then? Yeah, yeah, great. And, uh, and he did. He came in and sang. That's he sang awesome. only on three or four of the songs. Uh, just lovely, really nice people. They come in. They work really hard when they do that, you know? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's yeah. like going and jamming with somebody. Learning harmonies and working it out, getting the phrasing right. You know what I mean? And right. Taking, you know, the way that is. Right. So all of these guys did that for me. I was really knocked out. Thank you very much to all of them. Uh, and people have always really knocked out to see that on your record. You know, Noodles was there and, you know, Noodles' brother was there. <laughs> that right. was, it was lovely. Joey, uh, would you mind playing a little bit? One of the songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can play a song, yeah. Um, there's a few songs. Uh, <clears throat> Always on my mind 
just make sense? Then we live always in a time. There's a slide solo in there and stuff. Oh, yeah. So it's a bit of a beat song. And then this one. Dude, I've played your whole album. I love them all. Well, like we have today, things are different, but you don't change. Under the veil of laws forgotten, lesson learned, can we reach the bottom line this time? I love this song. Oh, yeah. The cold of the light of day. Things are different, but we don't say. Under our breath, we didn't mean it. Didn't feel that we deserve to cry. This time. The mark of this is time every minute every hour take away our power throw a lot of truth we can only make it better we do it all together this time down 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 <laughs> down 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 um Song Rainy Day Man is pretty good. Yeah, they're all good, Joey. Rainy Day Man, you only want me when I'm better. Da 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 da. Only when they cry. You gotta go get the record. I've listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we'll we'll tell them how to do that. I've already got it. So, <laughs> hey, Joey. What? Um, what? What? Th there's just so much positivity in that album you know I guess having experienced the lowest of the lows not that there weren't highs but you've experienced all these lows and then it's such a positive album it just had to be a huge release for you to do that album well, it was, you know, it was, yeah it's great to go, it was great to go make a real record with a real producer and yeah. I sent him like 40 songs, you know, yeah. and, and he picked out like 10 or 12. And then we did them, we made a record out of them. And uh, you know what's really great is I kind of had these ideas, some of them, I had one of the songs on the album I've had since Badfinger days, since 72, 73. Yeah. I've had these songs for years, some of them. And um, it was great to make the record. And here it comes to fruition, you know, uh, it sounds incredible. It really does. Yeah. And, and uh, for me, that's, 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 that's unbelievable. You know, for a guy my age uh, to get that, uh, what a gift. You know what I mean? Oh, what yeah. an amazing gift. And you, you're right. It's great to get the songs out and get these thoughts that I've had. And like you say, most of the songs have real ideas behind them. Yeah. Uh, they're not just uh, you no know, hit record type songs. Yeah. They're, they're Let songs about things, you know. Let's do a, let's do another session at some time, not too far down the road, and let's talk about those. Sure, man. Those songs, sure, I'd man. love to do that. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to ask you one more thing. Yeah. With all your experience, what advice would you give someone interested in a career in music? Just follow your dream, man. Do it. Uh, uh, read your papers. Pay attention. If something goes wrong. Go to your lawyer or a lawyer or go to the police. Don't forget the police. You know, stealing is illegal. You know, whether you're a rock band and it's your, it's your, your money or your songs, it's illegal. You know? You're a even human in New being. York. Even in New York. Don't forget about that. And definitely don't forget to go on and talk to the cops if you think you're getting conned. It's illegal, man. We never even thought of that. Yeah. We never even thought of that. Yeah. Read your papers, pay attention, be good to your pals. You know, they're your pals, man. 
you know? Don't let yourself down. Don't let them down. Show up, you know? Nah. <laughs> That's great, Joey. Great you advice know? from the from the guy that knows. What's next for Joey Molland? Well, I've got to find a cure for the COVID virus. <laughs> no. And then, because I want to get back on the road, man. I want to go back on the road and play. Yeah, Come yeah. and play this bar that you're in. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you get yeah, to man. Dallas, you need to let me know. I'm going to hook you up. All right, boss. I will, man. I will. <laughs> Absolutely. Joey, I want to thank you so much for being on my show today. It's been truly an honor. And... Personally, I've enjoyed every single minute of it, as I know our audience has. And I just wish you and your family the very best of what this life has to offer. Thank you. And to you and all those people listening out there, man, let's all have a good life. Let's yes, all have sir. a good life. We all live in America. It's a great place. You know? It is. <laughs> it is. To, um, live in, to live in this country is, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Guys, really, uh, thanks for having me, man. If you want to ask me about something else, it goes okay. along with what we were talking about. We can do that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be around. I got nothing else to do right now. I'm just kind of walking around the house and, that, and playing my guitar a little bit, and watching telly. You know, so Wearing your mask. Yeah, I've got my mask. I got it right here. I got it right here. <laughs> hey, uh, I, now I would have thought that you would have at least a bad finger mask. No, my girl has a bad finger mask, but I, <laughs> okay. I don't have one. I don't have one. Okay. Like I've, got a, I've got a plain white t-shirt. You, know? you, you ain't got no money. You ain't got <laughs> yeah, no yeah, cool yeah. mask. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> and if you had one. royalties coming in off that mask, you wouldn't get them anyway. I, 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 got, I got my prayer book. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, now that's important. That's, that's important. important. <laughs> now you're talking about Now you're talking about something bigger than this world. You're talking about eternity. <laughs> Well, you got to deal with it all, man. We got to deal with it. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Joey, hang on and don't go anywhere. All right, boss. Guys, be sure to check out Joey Mullen's album, Be True to Yourself. It's available on Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, Spotify, just about anywhere where music is sold. I'll have a link in the description below. So you can just click on it and go right to the purchase screen. It's just going to be that easy. I want to thank you guys for hanging with me today and please like and share this video and click subscribe to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free and then click the bell to receive notifications when I post something new like this one. That'll wrap us up for the day. Barside Jive. I'll see you guys next Monday at one o'clock central time. Until then, be safe. Be happy, peace, love, and rock and roll, guys. Always rock and roll. Always. Thanks, Joey. Thank you, man. Thank hey, you very much. Thank you, man. I really appreciate time. you. All okay, right. Bye-bye. See you again. Okay, sir. You betcha. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed my chat with the legendary Joey Molland. If you'd like to see more of my chat with Joey, just go to my YouTube channel by searching Barside Jive Live, and you will find guys, more. I hope you enjoyed my chat with the legendary <laughs> Joey Molland. If you'd like to see more of my chat with Joey, just go to my YouTube channel by searching Barside Jive Live, and you will find more. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Okay, where's my beer? Oh, it's out there. Um... And you'll find more uh, in the Barside Jive Rock and Roll Files playlist. And don't forget to click subscribe and then that little bitty, 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 tiny little bell. Yeah. Next week on Barside Jive, I've got Mike Peters, front man for the internationally acclaimed Welsh band The Alarm. And now a word from our own Don Pardo. Barside Jive shall not be responsible for any incorrect or inaccurate information caused by this broadcast. Barside Jive does assume, however, all responsibility for the satirical nature of its content and for the occasional fictional nature of its content. All characters appearing in this broadcast, even those based on real people, except for our featured guests, of course, are entirely fictional, and any resemblance between them and any persons living dead or undead is purely a miracle.
Guys, we <laughs> we are just about out of here. Jimmy, parting thoughts? How do you think that uh, pickle shot's going to work out for you? That pickle shot. See, it's going to be uh, – it's going to work out. <laughs> That's the problem. It's going to work out. Guys, don't forget, AJ's on Main. It's a great place. Got great barbecue, great drinks, friendly staff. It's pretty much all family, except for that chick with the messed up arm. Sam. Sam. She got bit by a pit bull. Pit bull. Yeah, no, I mean, not here. No, not here. But uh, anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, if you get waited on, it'll probably be a family member, so it'll be good. But he's got a great collection of craft beers. Got some great sandwiches and some great uh, barbecue on the bone. So uh, come to AJ's on Main. And we do appreciate you hanging out with us this afternoon, and we also appreciate your support of what we're doing here. And once we figure it out, we'll – be ahead and hope that you'll share us with your friends, your family, your followers. And until next time, all we ask is a few things. First of all, you uh, be kind to one another. You love this part. Peace. You don't do the heart. No. Love and rock and roll, guys. See you next Monday. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you!